Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Trevor and welcome to a tutorial on how to do, uh, I, I guess, what effects you want to use, you may or may not want to use on a microphone for a voiceover um, purposes. Um, sorry about the shaky camera. I'm actually holding the webcam right now. How's it going? What's up? What's up? Um, so basically what I have right here is, oh, let's change the focus so it's a little more appropriate. Right here we've got a 528E uh, voice processor from Symmetrix. And this is what I use. Um, so after trying to use live plugins for a while, I finally decided to get a piece of hardware that would help me out with a lot of this. And these are all things you can do in software. It's not quite as convenient, but it can still be done just as well in software. I want to make that clear. Uh, you do not need hardware to accomplish this. You can do this in Reaper, FL Studio, GarageBand, Logic, Cubase, um, uh, what's the what's the other one called? Um, it's the one I used to use. Uh, it's the Ableton Live. Ableton Live. Yeah, that's another one. All of these have um, the ability to install plugins and come with plugins uh, that you can use to do all of these things. So uh, the first thing we see here is um, a deesser. So deesser really isn't always required. But when I make sibilance, uh, high sibilance sounds like that, you can see that it activates. Um, it has a threshold here of what I can only guess is probably around um, negative twenty. I don't know. You can you can see it's right it's right there. The threshold basically once it reaches once uh, something that is above five k frequency. Um, or around 5k frequency it reaches a decibel level of negative uh, 20 or so um, it'll activate and what you see right here you see the uh, the two four six nine twelve fifteen going backwards um, that's the amount of decibels that it's reducing that sound by so um, not really something that's needed but it helps a little bit with uh, reducing sibilance if you feel like you have too much of that um, moving from there, we have kind of one of the more important um, th things, I think, um, for for making uh, your content a little easier to listen to, but something that needs to very much be done um, in, in small amounts and is very easy to overdo. A lot of people overdo this uh, when they first start out with effects, and that is the compressor. So a compressor, um, to put it simply, is a plugin or an effect that will kind of crush your sound <clears throat> it'll take the peaks off of your waveform so if you're imagining your waveform and you have all these um, low level um, forms that happen and then you have like peaks that are really high up it kind of chops off those peaks depending on where you want it to chop them off um, well, actually, I think that would be more limiting. It kind of lowers the peaks, I should say. Um, so essentially, what you want to do is set your threshold. I'd probably start around at negative 20 decibels if you have your microphone uh, gain staged correctly. And from there, you are going to mess with your ratio. And the ratio basically means um, that for every... So I have it set to a little above 2. So let's say it's 2. For every um two des i think it's for every two decibels above for every one decibel above the threshold it'll reduce the gain by two i believe that's how it works um it's something like that basically it reduces the signal that's all you need to know so if i talk really really loudly like that and i talk into the microphone you're gonna see the compressor like that it enables and it lowers the volume essentially when I get past a certain point if I move this dial here and I turn my threshold like way up like over here uh, this way sorry um, you're gonna see it starts to activate and it starts to really really reduce the signal suddenly I got very quiet because it's reducing the signal by so much right now so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that turn that back up to where it's right around there um, I think that's a pretty good spot for it right there I don't want to, re to reduce my signal too much. Um, and then 
So I, I consider the, a compressor and equalization to be kind of t the two main effects that you want to use. Um, so equalization. This uh, keep in mind that all of these effects, all, all of this right here, this is kind of it's it's very subjective. It depends on what you're going for. Some people want to have a really loud, powerful, um, low end commanding radio voice you know that's what they want if that's what they want then definitely don't set up your equalization like I do because I strive for clarity um, I like the sound that NPR has and they really go for kind of a clear sound and the way they do that is by enabling um, a uh, high pass filter on the microphones. Uh, a lot of microphones have a switch on them uh, that enables a high pass filter, which essentially cuts out frequencies below a certain point. Um, so most most equalization e equalizer plugins will have a setting for this, uh, but on on this board right here, um, the way you do it is you select. Oops, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. You select here. I'm gonna. I'm actually just gonna set this down. So we're looking at our low EQ here. Okay. Um, so our frequency right now is set between uh, 160 at the top and 16 at the low end. So I have it set to where it's. Um, I think it's probably around 80 to 100 or so <clears throat> uh, hertz there, and I have it set there. And then with the bandwidth, I have it set all the way down because I kind of wanted to just completely cut it off at the end and I have it completely I mean if this right here is um, zero I have it completely turned down like all the way it's it's cut all the way which means that it's cutting out all those low-end signals okay and cutting out those low-end signals reduces it removes a lot of the muddiness it removes a lot of low end hum a lot of um, like if you hit the mic on accident or you're hitting the table or there's really low frequency things happening all those are cut out and this is kind of desirable for most people because most of the human voice doesn't even exist that low uh, some people yes there's a little bit of their voice down that low but for most people there's not too much there so if I turn this up you're definitely gonna hear a little a little bit more low end uh, but that's not always super desirable so I like to keep it out um, but once again this is personal preference you know whatever sounds good to you is what you should do um, and then right here um, I have nothing happening in the mids um, I used to do I used to cut out a little bit of the mids on the AKG C214 kind of like that but I mean with this microphone I actually quite like how it sounds uh, just as is so I don't do anything there um, and as far as uh, the high end of the spectrum for equalization um, I give it a very very slight slight uh, boost at the top so this right here it, it, the dial doesn't look like it's at zero but it's at zero when it's right there that's kind of like there's a little place where it catches there and I turn it up just ever so slightly and give my highs just a very very light boost uh, this is around 7k Hertz or so 7,000 Hertz um, and the bandwidth um, meter right here or the bandwidth dial basically what that does is it um, in essence it's the width of the effect you're trying to add so if you and I'll, I'll, I'll do that I'll show I'll, um, record a clip of me doing this um, in in Reaper just to give you an example but basically you can widen the area that um, if I turn the, the bandwidth up it'll widen the area like below 7k Hertz and above 7k Hertz that it's affecting it's kind of like a little curve uh, that happens and essentially um, you pretty much for me I like my uh, my effects to be a little more localized um, this one is a little has a little more bandwidth but my other two well I'm not using that one this one right here um, has negative bandwidth because I want it to take all of that low end so everything that is below um, below 80 to 100 Hertz I want it to just cut out so that's why I have the bandwidth set to negative three there um, so yeah, that is pretty much uh, it. I do an I have another effect here called voice symmetry that I use, um, but this is a 
uh, hardware. Sp I'm not sure if there are plugins that exist that do this. It's kind of complex. I looked it up on Wikipedia. I honestly have no idea how to explain what voice symmetry is. It's something specific to the Symmetrix 52080, and it's something they do in radio um, that does something to specific frequencies to uh, lower the amount of distance between your your peaks so it basically adds it's like a different way of doing slight amounts of compression pretty much uh, without actually compressing compressing so it's uh really hard to explain um here's what it sounds like when it is off so that's with voice symmetry off and then that is with voice symmetry enabled so there's a small little difference there but uh, i think you, you probably get the idea at this point so let's go ahead and uh, put the webcam back up here um I've already done a slight tutorial on how I do my effects in in software. Let's get that focus going. Um, so I didn't feel like it was necessary for me to explain in software, but I will be, um, I sh added a couple of clips of me uh, doing all of those things in the software because just so it's easier to visualize because with a board like that, you can't really, it's harder to visualize what's actually happening. So. Um, once again, all of all of those um, all those things are things you can do in software if you um, if you have it if you have a mixer, um, typically like basic Behringer mixers um, have like a couple of EQ dials and you can't really adjust the bandwidth and um, and frequencies that you're adjusting, but you can adjust the gain. I don't actually know where, where those frequencies are for those dials, so it's something you would probably have to look up. But um, yeah, that's how I do it. You know. Uh, High pass filter basically boost the highs around 7k a little bit. Um, I'll in the description I'll put a link to a very useful chart, a kind of like a cheat sheet that someone made. Um, every person's voice is different. Um, every person's setup and their voice is different, so it's very very subjective, very um, very different, and the usage case scenarios are you know drastically different depending on your setup. So. Do try to take everything I just explained to you with a grain of salt. Uh, keeping in mind, though, that kind of the two main things are uh, EQ and compression. Um, beyond that, everything else is, is going to be a little extra if YouTube is your is your um, your end output, basically, for your content. Uh, hope you all enjoyed. Hope this was a little helpful, uh, kind of like a, a quick primer to um, effects for voiceovers and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Peace.